Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss the opening of bourbon hunting season. My name is McNeil. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Luke Otero, Lenny Eckstein, and Danny Kennard. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, guys. Hunting hey, everybody. Uh-huh. hey oh, so yes, hunting season has begun September 2nd. It all kicks off. We're going to be talking about that. But before we get to that, McNew said there's something she was dying to talk us about. What is that, McNeil? There wasn't. I was literally just yelling at my dogs and I called my husband because he's outside and they're losing their shit. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. Oh, I thought you were I thought you were saying in that thing that you had yep. to, you had a, I was a thing. no, because guys I have a lot of dogs, okay? It's a problem. <laughs> but, <laughs> Okay, I got a, I got a small talk. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> All right. Save the day. All right. Yeah. Have you ever, Tehran, and been in a situation where that uh, a subject was brought up, like uh, tonight, uh, bourbon hunting? Have you ever all of a sudden had something pop in your head, uh, like a scene from a movie or a cartoon or anything else like that? Because to me, you know, it was brought up of bourbon hunting is now open. So rabbit well, season, duck season. I, I, yep. That's rabbit exactly season, where I duck season. To. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So has so it ever. It, it, instead of rabbit season, duck season, it would be bourbon season, rice season, bourbon <laughs> season, rice season. <laughs> hmm. 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 Yeah, sometimes things do, uh, yeah, uh, trigger, uh, and of mm-hmm. course, it's good with the hunting thing. So, yeah, some things that aren't necessarily related. Uh, yes, yeah. So, I work with Jim, and sometimes things trigger his stories. He's got a bank of 16 stories, and uh, and if someone brings up something, uh, then it sets off his story. So, yeah. yeah, like if you mentioned Liquor Barn, then he's got a whole Liquor Barn story of uh, about Liquor Barn. And uh, I, I just, because I've heard it a thousand times, I'm just like, oh, okay, okay, and you know who's going to be fine. And the end always ends like this. You know who's going to be fine? I'm going to be fine. You know who else is going to be fine? They're going to be fine. You know who's not going to be fine? Those bastards at Liquor Barn. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the story ends. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. I've, I've kind of got one. I mean, it's a little weird, but uh, so uh, I've got a younger sister and she goes to Burning Man every year. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. she, she talks about it like she's uh, both like disappointed and uh, just feel such remorse for, or whatever for me for not being willing to go. And uh, I guess in my mind, when I hear her say Burning Man, I, I have things pop into my head and it, it's right. preposterous and it further reinforces why I don't want to. Yeah. Go. Like I watched that Woodstock 99 special to me, every music festival that's huge like that is exactly like what was depicted in that uh, in that movie. And I would think Burning Man's very much like that. Overflowing well, porta potties and all kinds of stuff. And I feel yeah. like it's worse. I mean like ridiculous outfits like uh you know men dressed up in like fuzzy bikinis wearing like steampunk attire right. in the desert for sure. why? Sure. Why are we doing this? 
Why not? I, I don't know. It's Burning Man. Makes I feel sense. like if you want to see art, you can go to a museum. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, those cartoons pop in my head. So, right. and, uh, the museum in Cincinnati actually had a Burning Man display for a while. It was actually cool because they just showed the art p- things, not the weird people. But I actually, I'm not into Burning Man, but that display was cool. That was cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Luke, are you into these uh, big festivals and that? Uh, like, uh, you ever go to anything like that? Well, here in Santa Fe, we have the burning of Old Man Zozobra. I like that. Uh, I want to go to that one one time. Yeah, like, if you're yeah. pissed off at someone or uh, yeah, you got a divorce, you put your divorce papers in there. Yeah, to, yeah burn it. And, yeah, throw yeah. your mortgage papers, whatever. Right. So, uh, that that uh, always coincides with with the so-called bourbon hunting season. So, yeah. Um, for me, I've never really. <laughs> made a, a effort to bourbon hunt I, although i do go to, when i'm out and about i go looking sure but, oh is it bourbon hunting season no because every tom dick and harry is out there doing doing that and it kind of go, it goes back to 25 years ago when <laughs> we used to go hot wheel hunting uh hot wheel hunting yeah oh yeah I've done that and, and uh back then hot wheel Mattel was still putting out some really good little die cast cars. They're not anymore, but they used to be treasure hunts. And I mean, it was just, it was a cult like thing. And uh, then and if you could find the red lines, you, you yeah, found something exactly. good. Oh. Danny, knows, Danny knows what I'm talking about. But then it's kind of like the bourbon situation now. So you got folks that are working in the warehouse or the stores that know when these cases of Hot Wheels are coming. So they go through them first, pick out the red lines and the treasure hunts. And then you got a bunch of crazies. When they set out the box, it's like a free for all. Right. So, and there's nothing there. It's all been picked. Yeah, so we, yeah. we stopped that. So if you think you move to where we're at now with bourbon hunting, you know, who, everyone knows what's going on. I mean, the ABC, you know, you're reading about all the time. The employees are selling lists of where it's going. The drivers are selling right. uh, information where it's at. I mean, it's just, uh, so I'll, I'll just stick to Zozobra. I have some margaritas. <laughs> and, well, and well, see, actually with the bourbon hunting, I tore on and got lucky one time on one of my vacations. Oh, I congratulations. Went- Oh, okay. Yeah, I was talking about the <laughs> whiskey that I found. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Never mind. Never okay. mind. I, it was what I was. Anyway, uh, I had <laughs> went to for for whatever God knows reason we picked Nebraska, but we Toronto went to Nebraska, and but uh, we were supposed to go to uh, this museum thing there. That's one of the things we wanted to do. But on an off story, we went to Mount Rushmore also, but that was messed up. But anyway, I happened to Toronto stumble onto this little small town. In, it's called Kearney. And they had quite a few allocated stuff, but their role was in order to get an allocated bottle, you had to buy a bottle of this. So in order to get Eagles Rare, you had to buy a bottle of 1792. And so on, you know, I mean, it was weird like that, but sure. they had quite a few allocated stuff, but they were selling it at the MSRP that they were supposed to be selling it as they weren't jacking up the price. Okay. Well, that so sounds I fair. Did not, I did not mind buying like 1792 small batch to get a bottle of, you can live with that. Right. I, yeah. I was good with that. Yeah. Two bottles there you go. Of Eagle yeah. Two bottles. Yeah. The Eagles, the Eagles rare. I, yeah. I'll just use that as an example. But just, I mean, that's just an example. And that's not, it's not, it's not necessarily the total story there. That's just a, well, no, just no, a no, little, no, I, I actually did walk out with that deal. Okay. Yeah, okay. But did you, but you do in this example, that, right? even though it didn't have to be, that's the exact example, but that's not the, the, the point of the story. Wasn't that Sorry. Right. Yes, it wasn't the Eagles the rare. It, that's not the point. The but point the, is the point is they had quite a few different <laughs> allocated stuff, and I've got a nice collection because of that. Yeah, Luke's uh, story about the Hot Wheels got me thinking. I the other day I was at the grocery store. I went there on a Sunday, and there, there's you know how they got the little carts for kids now. You know they they you, have the, you know so this is like a six year old. He must have got away from his mom. He's shopping the store by himself. 
I looked at his car and it had it had he must have had fifty Hot Wheels in the in the car <laughs> and then he had you know some some good snack stuff and exactly what you would think a six year old would be shopping for so yeah uh, it was awesome. great I, I can't wait till he caught up with his mom and she yeah. saw that stuff in his car and he was he was he was going down the aisles picking out the stuff yeah. he liked yeah. it, it, right it, it's called the little shopper's cart <laughs> yeah exactly it had a little flag on the top yeah like shopper and training or something I feel like you have to buy it because that's it's easier to buy it than it is to put it all back right exactly right right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the crazy thing hot wheels are probably the same price now versus they were uh, many years ago. they're like a dollar I buy my grocery. kid every time uh, go to the grocery yeah. store yeah. actually yeah. i know they got the, i know they got the expensive ones and all that but you can right. get the yeah. dollar ones yeah pretty much my, yeah the my grandmother big... used to buy them for me for 50 cents 50 cents. and then as i got older and everything they've increased to two dollar to a dollar and then i think they're up to what three dollars now no, uh, you, you can, can get them for a dollar. Right yeah, you can get them for a buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. they're now so you know back then the right. red line had a, had a metal base. Metal all base. these, all these real are rubber plastic. tires. You'd get on some of them. You yeah. know they have like you know uh, it's cool because you could lose the the tire could come off. Yeah, off the rim. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Uh, they Le like Lenny, I got to tell you, uh, uh, when Lucas was little, I mean we used to have a blast doing that, buying Hot Wheels and checking. Oh, yeah, them out. yeah. 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 So, Keep it going as long as you can. Right. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. Well, totally unrelated well, to the show, but I, uh, yeah, related to Hot Wheels. When I go to our grocery store here in BV, I'll take Arlo with me and uh, on the way, and he's like, Dad, can I get a Hot Wheels? And I instinctively say no. But then, like, within, like, 10 stops, I'm like, well, it's a dollar. So, yes, and not just <laughs> yes, but go look for your Hot Wheels car while I go grocery shopping. Right. You'll inevitably be there 20 minutes later. <laughs> And he's yeah. shopping the Hot Wheels, yeah. Perfect. That's what we do it every time. That's right. what we well, do when we go to the bourbon on the section. We're looking at <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Luke, to back to your Hot Wheels thing, dude, I cannot tell you how many, and you know what I'm talking about. I had the whole entire General Lee collection. The, the <laughs> Dukes of Hazard collection? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. don't know how many General Lees I buried out in my grandmother's front yard. <laughs> oh, wow. G. Tehran was so mad at me every weekend when I used to go on over there because I used to take a stick, dig in the dirt in, uh, in her front yard and make me a little racetrack with it. Well, you know, yeah. eventually those things got buried. So. Yeah. Sure, sure. I, I mean, lost them. Lost them, we yeah. all have stories like that. Uh you know, we used to stick uh, firecrackers into the red lines and blow them up. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, uh, now those red lines are worth hundreds and some are mm -hmm. thousands of dollars. Wow. But the, the one that gets me, and this is really going off chart here, is growing up, we, a bunch of us had Mickey Mantle baseball cards, trading yep. cards. And we would, get them a clothespin and put it on our bicycles. And <laughs> that's and that's what know, my dad did. Now With those my, bike, those cards are worth millions. And, mm -hmm. Oh, well. My dad ruined many a Mickey Mantle and Babe Ruth cards. <laughs> really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what do we do now? We drink. We drink. It is time <laughs> to drink. What is everyone drinking? We're going to start with Luke. Luke, what do you got there? I've got Buzzard Drew's uh, Cigar Rye. Okay. All right. Excellent. Pretty full. Could be good. No. Nope. Okay. okay. Decent. Decent. I, I wouldn't discount that. That could take it. We'll see. All we'll right. See. All right. All right. We'll let Danny go next. Danny looks like he was ready. All right. I've got the uh, barrel pick from. Uh, okay. Only you would know the answer to this. Not I understand. know. <laughs> no, my wife would know the answer too. Uh, Friar Tux. Friar Tux. Okay. Yes. It's a uh, dry fly. It's the specialty barrel. It's eight years aged. Yeah. Okay. When, what's the proof on that? Uh, proof is 143.8. Heck yeah. 0. 0.8. Don't forget the 0. 0.8. Okay. Nope. Not much there. Not much there. Luke's still That's got the lead. Bottle. Yeah, it is a well low bottle. You just got that too. So, yeah. yeah. All right, McDo, what do you got? I have some Sweetens Cove, Kennessee. Kennessee. Oh. Kennessee. Nah, nothing there. Luke's still got the lead. I'll go next. I, I might not get it either. I've got uh, planters uh, from uh, from our friends at Nobleton's. There's not much left in here, so I don't I don't think there's going to be a big cork pop here. Here we go. Luke, you're still. Yeah, this is. Uh, I like this stuff. Luke, you've still got the lead, man. Uh, All right. You're next. Well, 
Uh, I'm staying in the way of victory. Uh, I've got a bottle of Talnua Single Pot Steel American Whiskey, uh, Colorado. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That was great. Do you think that's enough, Danny, to Thank beat you. Luke? It's close. It's real close. Yeah. Do we have to call in Tim Swyatt for the? Yes. Uh, you know, we can make permission, and Tim's going to tell us from wrong later. It's probably mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> okay, so we'll just leave this one open to Tim. Oh, uh, uh, we're gonna, first time in the history of the Bourbon Daily. We're not going to announce Hi. a winner. Tim's going to have to announce the winner later. So yeah, we'll yeah, see what now, happens. Hi, it's Tim Syed's decision. With Tim, you yeah. To us. Oh. yeah. Sorry, and it could and this could come out like a month after it drops because he's always behind on his shows. So yeah, we'll <laughs> see. We'll see how long it takes him. So cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. cheers. All right. We'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about bourbon hunting season open up. What do we have to have? What, what are we seeking? Is there anything that we must get this bourbon hunting season? We'll talk about that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We'll also have a 24-seat classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop. It's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers, leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. This is Debbie Kennard, and my alter drinking Edo is Freddie Mac. So, I'll drink to that. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we are talking about open season for bourbon hunting. Yes, we are. This is always an interesting time for me. I mean, I would like to get most of the things that come out. I like a lot of these allocated bourbons. I don't mm -hmm. expect to get any of them, though. Uh, I, I have two things that I want to get from bourbon hunting season, and right now I've got one already. So uh, you know, the second is the official opening, but uh, if you happen to be in the right city, some of the stuff comes out a little bit earlier than that. And in St. Louis, for some reason, they've rolled out Little Book uh, first thing the last couple of years, and I have my uh, Little Book, and uh, 
uh, I have to have, I've got a vertical, so uh, I've got a, a vertical of unopened and I, I've, I've was able to add to that. And then we got one at the shop where I was able to drink some really good. I really like mm -hmm. from this year. Fantastic. Really good. Yeah. So, uh, but yes, I was able to secure that and, uh, yeah, I'm still trying to find more. And matter of fact, someone showed it, I got it at locally at Randall's. So I may have to hit that tomorrow and see yeah, if I can. They're, they're gone. They're gone. Of course. So yeah, I'm not going to get any more. So. Yeah, but at least I got that. So that's the one I've got to get. The other one I have to get is the Yellowstone Limited Edition. Uh, I know it's in out in Kentucky right now at the distillery. Uh, I don't know when it's going to hit other places, but I always got to have those two. So hopefully I can get that. I've never missed a Yellowstone LE, so we'll see. This could be the year, though. It's getting tougher to get, that's for sure. So, mm -hmm. yep, in search of. So that's the two that I I, I try to get every year. Uh, the other ones are just too hard to get. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, if I happen to be in the right place at the right time, heck yeah, I'm a buyer for any of the... BTAC, Pappy, you name it. I want all that kind of stuff. But right. Yeah. No. Not, well, not Steve, really likely. Four roses, right. I'd love to get it, but no, I haven't mm -hmm. had it in years. Steve, yeah. I will agree with you on that, but I've kind of converted over to the thing of, yes, I I am out there on the search for the allocated stuff. Right. Okay. I really do want that. But I've gone to the part of every time I go on vacation, I just start looking at the people and go, no, I'm not here for the allocated stuff. If you've got it, I want, I would like to buy it. But what I'm more interested in is I've started trying so many of these different craft distillers. I want to try stuff that's not near me. Right. You know, like the wood hat and stuff like that. That's around here in St. Louis, you know, uh, we got yeah. Wood Hat. We've got uh, Stumpies. Uh, I mean, they're and still six thirty. They're putting out great stuff. You know, they're in Kentucky. You've got Neely. I had a couple dropping off their kid in St. Louis uh, for uh, college uh, in this area, and uh, they said they'll be in in town twice a year. They came in, they bought one of each. And they're like, we want to try all the, this stuff. Isn't available. We're out of Ohio. You can't buy this stuff here. So the right. Uh, Ah, I love those kind of customers. I just we want to try something different, and we'll be back, you know, two times a year, uh, dropping the kid off, picking the kid up, and uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. So, yeah, yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, Danny, we need more people like you. Yeah, there you go, more Dannys. Right. Yeah. The, the, I mean, that's my biggest point of view because I mean, awesome. yeah, you, you you want the allocated stuff. Don't get me wrong, because I mean, that's what everybody is chasing. But right. I've 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 grown to. Yeah, you can't, yeah. Craft distillers because, I mean, they're just sitting there on the shelf and you could go in there in any liquor store and go, okay, that's local, that's local, that's local. I mean, they've got, some of them's got a little separate section for locals and some of them's got it mixed in and you got to look at stuff. And then when they try to want to annoy you and they come up, can we help you? Oh, well, I'm looking for stuff I can't find, you know. Right. I live around St. Louis. I can't find anything from. So here's some tumbling dice, sir. No. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta try that before I buy it. No, I'm never over. again. Yeah, never again. Huh? I, I like the one that I had down there in uh, Louisiana. Right. That was phenomenal. I, I mean, you tried it, didn't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I actually own that bottle. Also, he owns it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I also own a bottle of the most terrible crap that I've ever tasted. And you and Lenny both tried it up there in Maine. I brought the bottle with me. Yeah, he brought it all the way up to Maine. <laughs> just to teach Lenny and I a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, what do you think, Luke? You know, uh, what do you got to have? I've got a, I've got a good vertical goings from the beginning with a little book as well. Yeah. But it, yeah. It, hasn't, it hasn't come out here yet. But right. I, I'm pretty confident that I'll get one of it because I got one for to eat, to drink, and one to save. Um, the other, the big one that I'm going after though is um, the old Fitzgerald Fall Edition. Oh yeah, because I have got one from every. Really? Everyone. Remember when you and I got one? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the first uh, one, I think it was the first one. You and I got it together. The first one. Yeah. And it was at that one. time. It was at that time, Steve. I made the said i'm going to make the conscious effort of, of getting it and it, it it was kind of worked out really good because back then heaven hill if you showed up at their gift shop before they started going in line and all doing all sorts of different things if that was the thing of the day you could get it and i got it more often 
than I expected. Number one. Yeah. Um, and number two, I then I just been trading other stuff for. It. So I've got one of every. So they were going to do it for five years, Lenny, and uh, a fall and a spring, and then they they sprinkled a couple of of uh, nice ones in between. So I've got one of each, and so I'm just one bottle away from completing it at all. But I do have some duplicates that I do drink. So <clears throat> that's that's my my main goal. I'm like Danny. If I could get a BTAC or a Pappy, fine. If not, right. okay too. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna yeah. live. I, I'm not gonna be so wrapped up in the stuff. I'm upset. Yeah. I can't get that stuff because it's too hard to get. It, you can't. Yeah. You can't. You'll just frustrate yourself if you're like, I gotta get this. I gotta work hard. Nah, yeah. You, just, if it falls in your lap, buy it. Yeah. Right. That's just enough. like uh, take for instance. I was down there in Texas. My wife had to had to go pee. She's like, go to <laughs> Walgreens and turn around and let me go pee. Okay. She, she goes, it's by that liquor store on 9th Street. All I heard was liquor store on 9th Street. So I parked in the parking lot of the liquor store. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes into Walgreens, takes care of business, comes back on over. I've been looking up and down the liquor aisle. And then both of us look up at the same time behind the counter. And we see a Thomas Handy sitting there above the shelf marked for 150. My wife looks at me and she goes, is that what I think it is? I'm like, yep. She goes, you're getting it, right? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. There you so, go. That's the best piece she ever took. So there you go. There yeah. You go. I mean, so, you know, if it happens, it happens. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. A little, a little bit different situation for us because now that uh, we're getting quite a few purple tops for us to... So really? now every, yeah. Uh, oh, so nice. now everyone, today I had several meetings with customers. They said, uh, is there anything you're looking for in particular? <laughs> I said, not, I'll let you know. I, I, I want to have it in hand first and then, then we right. can talk. But, but yeah, yeah, we're getting, we're getting some nice, uh, a nice allocation from, from Willet with purple tops. Nice. Lenny, anything you got to have? Uh, this uh, hunting season. I mean, I'm going to kind of follow suit on it if it falls my lap, but here's a different angle uh, that I tried to start taking this year. Um, so at Deerhammer in Colorado, we, we had the opportunity to change our license at our tasting room from what we've traditionally had, which allowed us to serve anything that we distill at our own distillery to something more like a brew pub. It's called distillery pub where now we can serve other products and right. why that's cool for us is like, for example, if we want to serve a barrel aged Manhattan, now we can buy vermouth and serve it legally, yeah. which is awesome. So we're sitting down with, I, I, I'll just a distributor. It doesn't matter who. And uh, I got a call that he came in. So I, I zipped over to chat with him about uh, for a second about vermouth, but more about, I mentioned him. I was like, so we can order anything from you. Like I can just order whiskey from your whole, you know, your whole book of offerings. And he was like, yeah, is there anything you're looking for? I was like, I mean, you know, maybe that stuff that's a little harder to find. And he was like, you talking about allocated stuff. I was like, no, I mean, you know, just the hard to find stuff. Like, uh, <laughs> I was like, but if you did have some extra, you know, I'm your guy. Right. And he was like, oh, we'll see. I was like, I know how the game works. I'm just saying. Yeah. If you're yeah. looking for a buyer, you know, I'm right here. You're here. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's my game. Lenny, you've got to get Little Book this year. Uh, yeah. It's made of five different things. It's a blend, of course, but four of them are single malts. And uh, and then in the Kentucky uh, bourbon is uh, is the other that. thing. So, okay. so yeah, and it is so damn good. I mean. Well, I'll place my order this week. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it's, um, it's like magic. It's so good. It's I love it, man. Yeah. I got to try oh, it at the barrel shop. It yeah. is very good. Uh, it, I mean, you can get, you, you can. Try it in the next two weeks there at the barrel shop. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'll fly in for it. It's fly like, in for uh, it, please. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's McNair's yeah, turn, but she just left. If you get birthday bourbon, you can fly in for that. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Exactly. If you win birthday bourbon, yeah, swing by through St. Louis and uh, get a you know, taste of a little book, uh, chapter six, and then, uh, yeah, then you're off doing your thing, picking up your birthday bourbon. I, I need two of those because uh, yeah, I need one for Danny and one for Freddie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think you want Freddie drinking that stuff, though. It's too good for Freddie. He's already past the point of no return. Oh, uh, that's 
two bottles I get. So that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's one for Danny, one for Freddie. Gotcha. Danny will put his up, and Freddie does what he wants to with it. Yeah. Uh, it's McNew's term, but maybe she went to the bathroom. She just gets up and leaves. <laughs> so we're doing a show. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we'll just wait here for McNew. What do you think she'd be looking for? Well, well, she I mean, may be tending to the dogs. To the dogs. Uh, uh, the allocated larceny. Allocated larceny. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, she's definitely definitely into that. So yeah, uh, I I don't. I, she might not be coming back. I guess we just got to end the show. So on that note, uh, we'll end the show, McNew. Uh, <laughs> It's been for oh, most of us. Yeah. Oh, oh, McNew, do you have anything you, uh, you want to, you're looking for this bourbon hunting season now that you're back? No, I never do. Like, you know, like I, I don't go search for things. If it's on the shelf, great. If it's not, it's not. Like I'm not they going out of the way you. to find things. I never have. So, yeah, uh, same. Uh, I don't know. You know. There's one you're looking, aren't you, don't, don't, isn't your dream, what's your dream bottle? It's from the BTEC. Which one is it? Yes, it is. It's not BTAC. It is. Um, this is the fourth show, and I cannot think of it. It's a uh, Parker Parker's Heritage. I want Parker's every year. Which, which one, though? Whatever they come out with for the year. Oh, okay. so it doesn't even matter. You just want Parker's Heritage. I thought you always wanted um, um, one one of the BTAC collection. Yeah, that's not that's not right. It's always been um, Heaven Hills. I, I thought it was Parker's I thought it was with the Weller. I thought it was the the yeah, William Leroux Weller Leroux from Weller. Uh, yeah, 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 I remember. You yeah, I remember you saying that. You, you'd spend like a thousand dollars. You're like, I won't spend too much on it. Only like a grand. And this is uh, back when it was kind of you know true. going for yeah, like six hundred. Um, now it's yeah. now now it's like two or three grand. So uh, yeah, um, William Leroux Weller and uh, Parker's Heritage. They're the only two I care about. But that's only if somebody says, hey, I have this. Will you come get it today? I'm not looking. I will sure. not go for things. No. So. Yeah. If you're looking for it, you're just wasting your time. You don't find no it. one's going like to have it just sitting like out there. Clover or something. Yeah. You're not going to find it. But yeah. if somebody says, hey, McNew, I saw this here. You could go get it today. Different story. Yeah. Not to tangent too much, but are you guys okay with walking into a liquor store looking for something that really jumps out at you? You're like, wow, I can't believe I found this. But if it's not there, just turning around, walking out with nothing. Uh, sometimes it just, it I, just like, depends. I, I, I like I feel weird, so I've always felt weird in stores. I'm like, if I don't buy something, I'm like, did I steal something? Like it feels weird to walk out without buying right. something. Totally I don't know why my uh, brain works that uh, way. Uh, so I will buy something thirty dollars or less because I feel like thirty dollars is zero dollars. I, I wish uh, the customers. I own a store, <laughs> and, I, and people have no problem walking right out. So right. Right. I, 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 I have to buy something. I'm more. <laughs> I'm more of the type like Stephanie. I I feel like I'm obligated because I walked in there. Yeah, I feel like I'm obligated to, to pay you money. <laughs> so, but my wife has no problem going. Okay, yeah. there's nothing that interests us here. You know, even though we we do take our time. You know, we, I mean, we look behind the counter, we look up and down the aisle, and everything else. But there is times oh. I do. Feel now, like here's how you get out of it. Here's what I do because I, I I like to. Like Danny, stop at vacation stores. And I'm looking for the good stuff, you know, just to find this this treasure trove of cool things. And if I'll I'll go in and then just go right up, but usually they'll try to stop you that because then they're trying to last second to engage you. So then I always say, I was looking for your Blantons, and then I, then they're like, oh, another one of these idiots. Okay, no, we don't have that. <laughs> and then so so then I, I just walk out. Then yeah, they're like ah, another one of those guys. So yeah, that, I just always ask for that because I know have any plans that's what i always ask for yeah okay it's funny it's funny it's weird example because lenny this is a good question (laughs) on my way back to santa fe yesterday i stopped at this little liquor store and was it in buena vista no (laughs) it's in in belen new mexico so they (laughs) i walked in and I went and just checked it out, and it's all had the standards. And I said, "Okay." And I was I pulled a Steve. I said, "Do you have any Blantons?" And they looked at me. I said, "Yeah." <laughs> no, no. I said, no, awesome. no, 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 oh, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, okay. Uh, she goes, "Well, do you want one?" I, said, I guess I didn't even ask the price, and it, it was. Came out to with tax seventy one dollars. Oh, so I walked out yesterday. That's yeah, not but, bad. You, but you got I, a good who, deal. That's a win. That's a win. Yeah, that, that's a win. Unexpected win. But I, I, I yeah. kind of feel obligated if if I ask the once question, you ask for it. Yeah. 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 I, I so agree. Lenny, 
Hey, that's that's a that's a really good question, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the plans angle though. That's a funny one. Yeah, yeah. that's the easy one to I, use. I, yeah. I gotta, yeah, I gotta yeah. remember that one. Yeah. Well, so there and they, you go. And then they went, they went further. Said, "Do you want to do you want to be put on our list?" Uh, I'm from Santa Fe. I'm 90 miles away from you, but okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. There you oh, go. Well, hey, I, I don't mind signing up for lists. I, I mean, come on, because if you sign up for some of these lists, they give you a discount on the bottle, like $5 off or something. Hey, it's five bucks. You, you know, five bucks is five bucks. <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I, I get, <laughs> I get emails a week. No, thank I, I, you. Oh, Don't that's the reason why you got to have a junk email address. Oh, yeah. I've got a junk yeah. email address. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, everything gets sent yeah, to that. But they, both, but they both go into my iPhone. Like, all my messages from whatever account goes into oh, my Oh, when they, they got the iPhone where they put a lot of your emails together. I don't look at that thing at all. That's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't have well, a notification. I have to look at it. I, I will I will warn you of this, okay? Let, that's like me. I've got a charter email address that I haven't used in years. But uh, if that's you don't the go email you gave me, yeah, I think that's email you have, You son of a bitch, Danny. <laughs> Freddie Mills, the if you don't go in there and, 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 and uh, clear it out every once in a while, they'll eliminate your account. Just letting you know that. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you gotta you gotta have some activity, otherwise they're gonna they're gonna cut you loose. No. All right. On that note, we'll wrap this one up and uh, talk about where people can find us. Danny, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me at Danny Canard on Facebook. All right, Lenny. Oh, well, sorry. Go ahead. And maybe you can find Freddie at the ABB Barrel Shop. Yeah, you've got fans. You've got hey, fans. Yes. So yeah. hey, try to find me. Yeah, try to find you. A lot of our policemen. We get a lot of uh, policemen coming through there for some reason. I don't know why our, a lot of our uh, – uh, maybe Danny's wanted. And they're like, has this Danny Kennard been around here recently? Uh, <laughs> so if, if, if it's a lot of policemen, uh, guaranteed, uh, Steve, I'm either going to need a ride or I'm going to need a cot. One of the two, because <laughs> yeah. I'm not leaving that store. No, uh, no. Yeah, luckily we've got a couch. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Jim was Jim and I always say if we're ever drinking too much, who's going to be the first person to pass out on that couch? So, yeah, uh, but um, I'm going to do the same thing. Probably Danny. As, probably Danny. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the same thing to you as I turn around and told you that we ought to do to Neely. Just take all of his empty bottles that he's collected down there, set them up on the bar, and go. Holy yeah. shit! How much did you drink? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Lenny, how about you? Where can people find you? People can find me and the rest of Deer Hammer on social media at Deer Hammer on the webs of DeerHammer.com. You can also order our bottles shipped right to your door. You and come visit us in beautiful Buena Vista, Colorado. Well, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, Luke, how about you? I really like the way Lenny promotes his, his community. That's awesome, Lenny. He does. He does. Good cool. He, he's a good I, man. But you can find me in uh, Santa Fe at SantaFeBoutiqueWines.com on Instagram. Oh, no, on email and uh, Santa Fe Boutique Wines on okay. Instagram. Excellent job there. McNew, how about you? I am on Instagram at McNew ABB. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. The important website, though, that's abvnetwork.com. you got to check that one out. Everything that we do is out there. We put all of our previous shows, which there's a lot of them. We have our blogs out there, our newsletters, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Of course, see us at the ABV Barrel Shop. We are in Arnold, Missouri, uh, which is a St. Louis suburb, or just sign up for our updates at abvbarrelshop.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask you to please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye. See ya. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. 
Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary, or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's birthday barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank you.